Okay, welcome back to the exciting world of chemical thermodynamics. Um, we've already done quite a bit on thermodynamics, and you, you have a pretty good idea of what they are. Um, we just kind of reintroduced and uh, more defined this idea of free energy, and of course, that's, uh, that's the idea of, of how much energy you actually have, because uh, some of it goes into to kinetic energy and some of it goes into entropy. Um, so it's a big deal because um, you, you, you can only use the energy that's free. And so thermodynamics is, is the uh, study of the movement of energy, right, uh, through chemical reactions, which is what everything is made of around us. And so understanding um, how it moves, uh, where it goes, is, is really important. Um, now, we also have this idea of equilibrium. And so equilibrium um, factors into thermodynamics because, you see, uh, at, a, at the point of equilibrium, you've satisfied uh, thermodynamics in the sense that um, entropy is satisfied, uh, enthalpy is satisfied. So, um, so we, we understand that in, in the universe, things want to go from higher states of energy to lower ones, and that's going to happen spontaneously. So the idea of spontaneity uh, actually leads to um, a, a stable thermodynamic state. So thermodynamics and equilibrium actually are, um, are connected. And so that's what we want to do in this video is, uh, is show you how those two are connected. And so here's the equation that you're going to use uh, to, to, to sort of figure out these equilibrium with thermodynamics integrated type problems. And so change in G we know as free energy. Um, th this change in G with the little uh, circle degree thing is actually what we would call our free energy, uh, kind of standard condition free energy, right? Um, this is the one that, you know, you could look up in the back of your book. Um, so I am going to do a problem that... Um, that uh, you couldn't look up in the back of the book. You actually have to solve for it. And so that's where equilibrium comes into play. Um, and so, so change in G right here, it, because how is it different than this, um, is this is the, the standard or the uh, change in free energy under non-standard conditions. And so what are standard conditions? Well, um, so this is, uh, we would call this the change in energy under standard conditions. And, and what does that mean? Well, standard conditions for free energy is kind of like our STP stuff. So we've got uh, zero degrees Celsius. We've got um, one ATM. Uh, and uh, we've got, uh, well, if we're dealing with concentrations, we're going to have one molar concentration of everything. So that's the idea of uh, standard condition. Okay, so under non-standard condition, um, the, the, the free energy under standard condition um, is going to be affected by um, the, the, the state of equilibrium. And so what's going to happen is whatever that standard condition, we're going to add to it, um, this is R right here, and R is the uh, universal gas constant. So that is actually 8.314, and that's measured in joules. And then temperature, of course, we understand is going to be in Kelvin. So this is uh, in degrees Kelvin. And then we also have oh, I'm a little trouble with my chalkboard. Um, and then we have the natural log of the Q. OK, so you understand uh, log function. Um, you should understand a natural log function from mathematics. But taking the natural log of the Q, of course, gives us a whole number that we can work with that um, that um, fixes essentially a curve, so we actually have a curve on a graph, so we actually have uh, real real numbers. Um, so um, the Q, you guys understand, the Q is uh, essentially like an equilibrium expression. So a Q expression is going to equal uh, the the concentration of the of the products, right, uh, divided by the concentration of the reactants. I don't know why my Chalkboard is, is doing that, but hopefully it'll get better. Um, so the concentration of the, and, and so at, at Q, we understand the idea of Q is that you don't have to have them at equilibrium. So you can just insert whatever concentrations that, that you're starting with. So, so the idea is that the, the free energy is going to be related to the, um, the free energy under standard conditions uh, plus uh, the universal gas constant times the temperature. Um, times the natural log of the concentrations of what's there. So what we actually have integrated here 
is all of our equilibrium discussion and all of our <laughs> thermodynamics discussion. Now, the, the, the equation is simple enough to use, but um, understanding the chemistry is really, really important. Um, so, so in some of the understanding, at equilibrium, right, at equilibrium, uh, there is no, no G. The, the, the free energy here is going to be zero. So essentially this is, this is gone because um, at equilibrium is when we have this. And so, so this is it. So, so the actual total overall free energy right here is going to be whatever this is. So at equilibrium, we'd say that this number G is zero. And at equilibrium, Q, of course, uh, the natural log of Q, this has to be at equilibrium. So this is going to be equal to our K. So uh, the Q then would become, you know, if it was an acid, uh, you would have a, a acid equilibrium. If it was a, a base, you'd have a base one. Um, if it was a, you know, a partial pressure, you'd have Kp, right? Um, so all of our different equilibrium expressions could be inserted in here depending on the chemistry or the, the reaction that you're looking at. Um, and so what happens is that we can take this and we can insert zero in for change in G right here. And, um, and so then it becomes zero equals the change in, uh, the change in G under standard conditions plus, uh, plus the, the gas constant times temperature times natural log of, of K. Um, so, because uh, Q gets replaced with K because we're at equilibrium. And so we can rearrange that equation to, to say just negative change in G. And so what we can do is we can solve for this, um, this uh, free energy under standard conditions um, if we don't know it. And so that's what we're going to do real quick. So here is, uh, here's a problem that I've uh, put up here for you. Uh, let me go ahead and, and get rid of this marking I've got here. And so here's, here's the problem. Um, and so what is the change in G for cyanic acid at 25 degrees Celsius? So if we write out the net ionic equation for that, uh, the cyanic acid is uh, HCNO, and that's going to, of course, uh, dissociate into hydrogen ions and the um, cyanic, uh, or the, the cyanate molecule, and so the cyanate ion. Sorry about that. And so then that's the conjugate base with the acid. Uh, we can look up the Ka of that. And we know that the Ka in our equation is going to be our K. Or um, in this case, it's going to be you know our K right here. So if you look at this, now all we have to do to solve for this is, is to insert our numbers. Because we already know the universal gas constant, 8.314. We know the temperature is 298 because it told us right here that we're at 25 degrees. And... Um, we can just take the natural log of the Ka, because the K is the equilibrium constant right there. So uh, we go ahead and do that, multiply these together, and multiply them times the natural log of the Ka, and we get negative 19.715, and this is in joules, because all of this right here is in joules. And um, You guys remember that um, G is expressed in kilojoules, but when solving, you want to either convert it to joules or convert the joules to kilojoules because um, um, a lot of the other ones are going to be expressed in joules. And so, uh, so negative, and so we could get rid of this negative by multiplying both sides times negative 1, and then converting to kilojoules uh, turns this negative 19,000 into um, 19.7 kilojoules. So the change in G under standard conditions for uh, cyanic acid is 19.7 kilojoules. And we did that by inserting the Ka. So they're not going to give you a free energy typically for acids, um, you'd have to actually use this method to solve for it. And you can look it up uh, probably on the internet, but in the back of your book, you're not going to find that one. Um, so I want to show you one more thing that we can do with this, because I think that would help. Uh, remember, at equilibrium, our change in G is zero. So we don't have a free energy overall, because it's, um, it's at uh, essentially standard conditions with the... Um, with the uh, with the equilibrium, and every time we are at equilibrium, our overall change in G is zero, and our um, we're going to find that uh, we can solve for that. So this this equation right here only works when you have a situation at equilibrium. All right. So what about if we don't have a situation at equilibrium? What if we have what if we're trying to solve for the change in G of cyanic acid, uh, and we have starting conditions? And so in this case. Uh, we're going to have to use this full equation, right? 
because uh, but but what but before we even do that, we have to know we have to know what this is. So and we just found that because we solved for that uh, using the Ka of cyanic acid. So we solved for the uh, the the change in free energy at the standard conditions using the equilibrium constant expression. And so, so let's say these are our starting concentrations. We have um, a hydrogen ion concentration right here, 4.7 times 10 to the negative 2. Our um, cyanate is uh, 5.4 4 times 10 to the negative 4th. And our initial concentration of cyanic acid is 0.25. Uh, well, these are all of our initial concentrations, whatever we're looking at. So, um, so what is going to be our change in G? Because we're not at equilibrium. Um, and because we're not at equilibrium, we are going to have an excess uh, change in G. There's going to be extra, right? Um, there's going to be more. And so, and so what we need to do is we need to know what is that beyond our standard condition change in G. And so that's where we insert uh, what it is at equilibrium. And of course, we're going to add to that uh, whatever these starting conditions change. And so these starting conditions are going to change... Um, I'm going to change it uh, by just inserting them in there. And so it becomes a Q rather than an equilibrium expression. So, uh, so just insert those into your Q, uh, which is just a simple equilibrium expression. Uh, so we have the products multiplied by each other divided by the uh, reactants. Take the na natural log of that and uh, multiply it times um, 8.314 times 298 and then add it to your um, 19,715. Now, make sure you don't put your 19.7 in there because remember, that's kilojoules and 8.314 is in joules. So we want to use that, uh, we want to use that number we solved for back here that was in, um, in joules, right? So, um, so we have the 19,715, just insert that in there. Um, or you could convert this to kilojoules if you wanted to but I think it's easiest just to leave it all in joules and uh, go ahead and solve it. So when we solve this, we get an answer, of course, that's in joules. So we're going to get um, negative 3,066.9 joules, convert that to kilojoules. And so our change in G is going to be negative 3.07 kilojoules. And so with a negative change in G, we could actually, we could actually now say for sure that with these starting conditions, uh, we have a spontaneous uh, reaction. This is, this is going to go on its own. Um, for sure. So we can declare it spontaneous and um, we can solve for the change in G. So that, that's a lot um, that's you know showing you how this equation uh, relates thermodynamics and equilibrium. So the idea is that free energy is related to equilibrium because free energy is determined based off of how the thermodynamics uh, naturally take things and equilibrium is a state at which thermodynamics is, is satisfied. And of course temperature changes it um, and concentrations change it, and so we have to be able to factor those two things in. All right, hopefully that uh, explains that well enough and allows you to be able to uh, solve some kind of complex problems, but um, I'm hoping that you understand the chemistry behind it.